Hello there everybody, Sam Strange here and welcome back to the railway and welcome back to Great Engineers. Uh, now this is the second episode of Great Engineers, the first one I put out last week and that was all about Dougal Drummond and his locomotives. Uh, so if you haven't seen that already, do go and check that out. But this week, as I promised, uh, it's going to be all about Charles Collett. Uh, who of course was a, a famous engineer for the Great Western Railway and today I'm just going to be showing you, not all of them, but a good selection of the locomotives that he designed in his lifetime. Uh, so Charles Collett was actually born on the 10th of September 1871 and he spent many years of his life working as Chief Mechanical Engineer on the Great Western Railway. During his work he designed many classes of locomotives including the Castle class, the Hall class and of course his very own Collett class, uh, which we'll see later on. Um, during his almost 20 years of service to the Great Western Railway, he produced an accomplished and standardised fleet of locomotives, and uh, many of those perfected the designs of uh, Churchwood, and I think there was a couple of others uh, that he uh, based some designs off. And sadly, Collett died in 1952, in April, and he was 80 years old. Uh, so that's a little bit of info about the man himself, but without any further ado, let's go and start by looking at a couple, well, six, of his locomotives. Alright, let's give it a look. Okay, and to kick things off, I'm going to start off with the Castle class, which was from 1923. Now, I'm uh, well, I would guess that this wasn't his first locomotive, because it is fairly large, but it's certainly the first uh, that we're going to look at today, and uh, it was from 1923, yes. Uh, and she's uh, a beautiful Wren model, I reviewed her a couple of weeks ago, or it might have even been months now. Uh, but she's pulling some Great Western coaches, I think there's seven of those, including a couple of restaurant cars, so hopefully that should look nice. And I'll just get these points, and there's quite there's quite a lot to set here, so just give me a sec. Oh, and there's this one as well. Yeah. And uh, basically I've got to try and get her all the way across to the third line. So there's going to be a little bit of shunting to do, but I don't often film very much of that anyway, so I think it might be nice to get some of that on camera. Uh, but I'll stop yakking now, and uh, let's get her out. And please, if you're at home watching, do a bit of this, please, because there's a lot of coaches there, and there's a lot of points. And, uh, yep. Yeah, what will happen will happen. So I'll go over to the control now then and we'll give us some juice. And give me a shout if you hear any crashes and bangs. Uh, uh. Hang on. Bear with me. No harm done. Okay, carry on. Well, she very nearly did that without killing any passengers, uh, but I think she's all right now. Now she's on the line, so I've got some points to change. So yeah, let's go and see if we can get her on that middle line. Right, I'm going to see if I can't do this without stopping her. So I'm going to change these two, which will get her onto the middle line, and then I'm going to have to grab the camera and dash down and change another set of points, which should take her straight to the middle. I'm sorry, I've just spotted some bluff. All right, here she comes then. Hopefully without derailing. Right, come on then camera, let's go and change another set. Right, I'll just dump that there then, and I think it's just these two, well, yeah, I hope it is. And then that should get us straight onto that outer line. No, inner line, I always get that mixed up, I don't know why. And she's getting quite far away from the, uh, the controller now, so she'll be slowing down a bit, but I can uh, shut these off. And, uh, well, in fact, no, I'll leave them open so she keeps coming, and then I'll stop around at the front for you. Yeah, that was surprisingly successful actually. She crossed a lot of points there without derailing. Alright, I'll stop her at the front then so you can have a good look at her. Right, I'm going to try and do this accurately. About there, I think. Is she in shot there? Oh yes, I've, that's the first time I've done that perfectly, we'll have to remember that. Okay, so there she is. Now she's uh, where you can see her a bit better. Uh, she's uh, Windsor Castle, of course, as you can probably make out there, number 4082. And I chose this one because it's in uh, the lovely, lovely BR Blue with the sort of yellowish stripes going down the side there. Um, so yeah, really, really nice engine, this one. And of course, with it being Wren, um, all those coaches are absolutely no problem at all for her. Uh, so yeah, that's it. That's a quick close look. I'm just going to get her off again. And uh, while she runs round, I'll tell you all about the class and uh, a bit about Collet while we're at it. Okay, and there go all those coaches, of course. I'll get them at a bit of an express speed now. There we go. So the Castle class then was also known as the 4073 class, and it first appeared in 1923, as I said. 
Uh, it was a far more capable development on Churchwood's Star Class, um, which came before, of course. Uh, so that's the first design we're going to come across um, that uh, Collett took uh, from a previous engineer and uh, updated it and modified it and uh, made it his own, really. Uh, in 1923, when they first appeared, they were actually the most powerful locomotives in the country and on top of that they were nowhere near the biggest which means that there's some serious uh, design trickery going on there and they famously hauled trains such as the Cornish Riviera and the Cheltenham Flyer and there were 121 of them produced over about 25 years and still 8 of them exist in preservation which is quite a nice healthy number isn't it? Okay so I'll leave her trundling around for a second and then I'll bring her to a stop and I will show you the second loco Yeah, stunning performance from the Castle class there. If I just stop her, I think she should be alright there. And uh, while she waits, I will show you the second engine of the day, uh, which came a little bit later than the Castle's. Uh, so yeah, let me go and show it you. So if the Castle class had a big sister on steroids, uh, this engine would be it. This is the King class, this is my Hornby one, and it's uh, the King George the Sixth, I think that is. Um, and uh, it's a wonderful locomotive, it really is. And uh, yeah, this one was a couple of years later, hang on, I'll tell you the date. 1927, so yeah, quite a few years later. And uh, yeah, this one was uh, a super castle, if you like. And uh, she's going to have some Pullman coaches, as you can see, there's one, two, three, there's five there. But also in a siding just behind her, as you can see, there's another couple, including a brake. So she's going to have to do a little bit of shunting to get those. And I'm hoping that all the other engines on the layout aren't going to burst into life when I start changing points and such. Uh, but I won't know until I try, so let me just get this point. There you are. And uh, I'll give her a bit of juice and get her out of that siding, and, and then I'll see how we get on uh, picking up those coaches. Right, let's give it a go, shall we? Nice and steadily does it. Okay, I've just got to get her past these points. A bit quicker now. Yep. Yeah. So, if I just stop her there, I think that should do it. I'll just change some points around. Hang on. So that one wants changing back, and it's these two. That one, that one, and that one. And now if I reverse her, I should be able to take her into that siding and pick up the coaches. You can just see the end of one uh, there. <laughs> okay, so let's see if that works, and you know what my Pullman coaches are like, so expect to see a derailment. Okay, there's a bit of funny business going on somewhere, but we'll try and carry on. Hmm. Well, it's got them anyway. Perfect. Yep, yeah, seems good. And I want this engine over onto the middle line, so I'm just going to change these two. There we go. And hopefully she'll be as good as she was just then. And she won't let any of her coaches derail. So how many is this just so we... Oh, hang on. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Alright, hang on, hang on. There's going to be a sneaky edit just here. And would you believe it, as soon as I stopped filming, a gust of wind came and re-railed it. Oh, goodness. Oh, well, here we go then. Oh, that was ever so lucky. Alright, there she goes. Okay, I'll shut these points. There we go. Now let's get her going again, and I'll bring her around to the front again so that you can see her, and then I'll tell you all about the class as always. Okay, let's get her going then. There we are. I thought I'd move the camera so you can actually see her. Nope, wrong way. Hang on. There we go. Alright, let me bring her around to the front then. It's a fantastic engine, this. It's very, very good at pulling, as you can see, but... Not as good as my Castle class, but of course in real life this would be an absolute monster of a locomotive. 
Here we go then. If I just stop her there, I mean it's a bit awkward because those coaches are in the way, so I'm going to have to film her from this side. Uh, but yep, yeah, there's a close up then. Uh, what is she? What number is she? I can't quite see it. Hang on, I've just got to get a bit closer. <laughs> 6028, yeah, sorry, that's my bad eyesight, keeping in again. So yeah, a lovely, lovely king class. It's a, basically a, a giant castle class, but let me tell you about her properly with some real information. So here we go then. I'll start her up again, and here's just a little bit of background about the king class. There we go. So as I said then, the King class was introduced in 1927 and they were basically Collett's development of the Castle class, which of course in itself was a development of Churchwood's star. And he really intended them to be the super castle, and that's quite a common word used to describe them. And they subsequently became the largest and most powerful 460 locomotives ever to run within the UK, which is a massive title really, isn't it? But uh, yeah, very impressive. Roughly 30 of them were produced and sadly only three have been uh, preserved. But I think one of those is at York, isn't it? I'm sure I remember seeing that one there. But yeah, and I know everything I've shown has been in BR Blue so far, but in real life when they were new, they were probably in that beautiful green that you get so used to seeing with the Great Western locomotives. But yeah, for some reason mine are BR Blue and I just decided to run those. Uh, so yeah, that's the King class. Yep, yeah, another beautiful performer then, absolutely gorgeous this one. I'm just going to park her up there while I get the next loco out onto this outer line and then once they're all on, we'll do a little running session with all three of them. Okay, so let's go and get the third Great Western Collet 460 onto the line and uh, we'll see what you think of her. Okay, so next up then it's the Hall class which came a year after the Kings in 1928 and uh, he designed these for mixed traffic work, so she's got some wagons, uh, if you can just about see there, they are mostly obscured by the uh, little engine shed there, but you can see she's got a range of open wagons there, as well as a great western uh, guards van on the back there, but you'll see that a little bit better once she gets up and running, so I'll just pop that point open for you, yeah, and I'll give her a little bit of juice and see if I can't get her out of that siding. Now, I think I was a bit rough when I put her into that siding because some of the wagons jiggled around a bit so it might be that some of them have derailed uh, but if they have we'll just have to try and deal with it but yeah we'll give it a try anyway so here's the whole class then. And here she comes, quite an early Hornby model this one is and uh, I'll show you her, as I always do, a little bit closer up. So, just get her to the front here, where she's out of focus probably. <laughs> there we are. So yep, yeah, that's a little close up then of the Hall class. It's Nella Hall, as you can see, and uh, it's running number 5934. Now I do have a lot of these early Hornby Hall classes. I've got, uh, what is it, Hagley Hall, or Hagley Hall, however you say it and also Albert Hall, but I thought, I, I don't think I've shown this one on the channel before, so uh, yeah, let me know if that's something you'd like to see. Uh, but yeah, that's the lovely Hall class then, I'll get her back up and running with those wagons, and uh, yeah, I'll tell you all about the class, as always. Alright, there she goes then, empty wagons as you can see, because she's not that much of a great puller, so yeah, she's much happier with empty wagons. So the whole class then, 1928, as I said, for mixed traffic work. And uh, once again, this one was based on another of Churchwood's designs as well, which was the Saint class. And just like the castle, uh, the halls, or also known as the 4900 class, were much larger and more powerful than the Saints. And uh, quite an impressive number of these were built. There was 259 of these built, which is an awful lot really, isn't it? And uh, a healthy 10 have been preserved. So, uh, you know, wherever you go really, you can probably see a whole class quite easily. 
Uh, so yeah, that's all about the whole class. So enjoy her running for a second longer, and then I'll start the other two engines up with their trains, and we'll have a little running session with them. Get everything else up and running then. The castle class first, if you will. There we go. And of course the king class. Well, let's have a bit of a running session with it all, shall we? Yeah, it's great this is. I didn't really intend for it to be three, four, six O's at the same time. Uh, but it's really a great thing to do, and we've done it now. And of course, one day I might redo a Great Western running day of some sort, just get loads and loads of Great Western engines together. But we'll see. There's a King Class, of course. Just a handful of Pullman coaches, really. Yep, everyone seems to be running well as well. No problems there. Alright, let's wait for that castle class, shall we? She should be appearing any second. Yep, there she is. Yeah, she's a mighty engine, she is. Yep, there's a lot of motion anyway, isn't there? I love that. Alright, so I'm just going to stop everything then, there goes the castle, stop her there, the king's on his way, <laughs> or her way I should say, stop her there, King George, there we are, now we're just waiting for the whole class, there we are, safe and sound. So yep, yeah, there you go, that's the first three 460s, the rest of them aren't 460s, you'll be glad to hear, I've got a bit of something different, so I think I'll take these off and put them back into their sidings off camera. Uh, just so that the video doesn't last all day and then uh, I'll get on with it so I'll see you in a second I'll just put these away and then I'll be right back okay so I've got everything back into its sidings as you can see so we're now ready to carry on and we're moving on now with uh, an 060 and this one's actually a 5700 class which is a 57 XX pannier tank 
And as you can see, she's coupled up to three uh, Great Western coaches, but also, as you can see in the siding next to her, I've got this little 14 double X. Uh, and that may or may not have been Collett's design, uh, but I'm just using that one uh, to help me. So she's going to basically pull out those two Great Western coaches, and then decouple, and I'll get rid of her. And then the pannier tank can push the remaining three coaches out of that siding behind it, and uh, couple to the train, uh, making it five coaches long. So let's give that a try then. Let me just get the points. There we are. Now I should be able to control the 14 double X. Okay. There she goes then. That's a nasty airfix model. As you can see, that's why it's nasty. Let me just give it a nudge. There we are, just about. There we are. Okay, so I'll just pinch that loco. Hang on. Nasty thing. Never buy one of these, by the way. They're really not good. Get a Hornby one if you can. Alright, and I'll just change those points then. There you go. And send the pannier tank out. And hopefully she'll meet those coaches. Okay, so there she is then, the 5700 class with the complete rake of five coaches. So I'm just going to reverse her back now, uh, round to the front so that you can see her up close, and then I'll get her running properly for you, and uh, yep, I'll tell you all about the class. And there she is, hopefully she's in shot there, um, yep, just about. But either way, yep, there's a close-up, and of course she's pulling from the front today just for a bit of fun, uh, because I always seem to pull from the back of the locomotive, so I thought it would be a nice change. But yep, there it is, the GWR Pannier Tank 5700 class, and uh, this one is 8751, that's the running number, and uh, yep, these two were designed by uh, Charles Collett. Uh, but yeah, I'll tell you more about that then, uh, let me get her up and running, and here's some more information about the class. So yeah, these came a year after the Hall class in 1929, and they belonged to the family of pannier tanks, as you can probably tell. And several engineers, really, including Churchwood, uh, were involved with the development of the pannier tanks, but the 5700 classes were actually designated for light goods, uh, but they often carried out short passenger duties, uh, which is what mine is doing right now, as you can see. And a massive, massive number of these were produced uh, for more than 20 years, uh, resulting in a total of 863 in the fleet. And a whopping 16 have been preserved as well, which is really good news. And of course, uh, there's all sorts of pannier tanks uh, that have been preserved, not just the 57 double Xs. Uh, so yeah, you can see those quite commonly, really, at all the heritage railways and that sort of thing. So yeah, that's the pannier tank, the 5700 class. Okay, I'm just going to bring that lovely little engine to a stop there then, and uh, she can wait there just for a second while I get the next couple of locos out. So, yep, let's move on, shall we, and look at Collett's next loco. So next up then, this class of locomotives from 1930 actually got Collett's name, and uh, these were called the Collett class then, and uh, they're a lovely little 060 locomotives, as you can see, uh, designed for freight, so as you can see, mine have got the sort of long form factor um, box vans, or whatever you want to call them, there's all sorts on there, all sorts of different brands. Uh, so yeah, that's the Collett class, and I'm going to get her out, round to the front, so that you can see her a little bit better, because she's in the shadows slightly there. So I'll just grab these points, and I'm just making sure everything's set properly. Yeah, it seems to be okay so I'll go to the controls then and we'll start the colic class here she comes and this one's a mainline locomotive uh, so it is loco driven not tender driven uh, but it's made by mainline as uh, as I said uh, which was Palatoy I believe so yeah, in the 1980s I believe that would have been, and yeah, she's a bit of a noisy runner, and uh, even more so with that Cadbury's wagon 
derailed, but that will magically be back on the tracks in the next shot. Uh, and I've just got to change some points, so bear with me. So I'm having her on the middle line, so I'll just change these points very quickly there and get her to speed up a bit. Here she comes. Oof. That was a bit rough on the points, but she's only an 06 so, so there's not, you know, there's not many trucks or bogies to derail. Alright, stop her there. Set the points back again, and let's reverse her, if I can. Yep, there we go. So that you can see her up close. And I'll actually turn the camera around, hang on. So that she's nicely lit. So I'll put the camera around here, hang on. <laughs> oh dear, that wasn't very professional, was it? Okay, so there we are then. There's the Colic class. And what running number is this? I've actually got a couple of different running numbers of Collet class, but only one chassis, so I have to change the body if I want to change it. But this one is number 3210, and it's got the BR tender uh, with the Lake Crest on it. So, yep, yeah, there's a nice close-up of the Collet class. And, uh, yep, yeah, let's get her running then, and I'll tell you all about her. No, not backwards. <laughs> there we are. That's it. Looking quite good with all that freight. I like the blue wagons especially. Introduced in 1930 then, and produced for 18 years, the Collet class, or also known as the 2251 class, uh, were actually intended for medium freight duties. And they actually closely resembled the Dean Goods class of locomotive, uh, which was designed by William Dean of course, uh, but they were modernised and improved in several areas, um, which included tapered boilers. Uh, so I don't know why um, they were called the Collet class. Um, because you would have thought uh, if Collet had have designed a locomotive uh, that was you know, entirely original, uh, then that would have got the name of the Collet class. But apparently most of his work just involved improving uh, existing locomotives and rebuilding them and such. Uh, so, yeah, whatever the reason, who knows. Uh, so 120 Collets were produced, but only one has survived, and that's at the South Devon Railway in Devon, and I've seen it, and it is really, really lovely. And uh, I don't think it's this one, but I have got the body for that locomotive, so maybe one day I'll put that body on and uh, run it like that. But yeah, a very lovely loco. Alright, I'm going to bring her to a steady stop then. About there will do fine, I think. A bit further. There we go. So that's the Collet class, as I've said about ten times. <laughs> just out of shot as well. And I'll get her running again in just a second with all the wagons and such. But first, the final loco of the day. Uh, let's go over to her siding and I will show you her up close. So there she is then, the final loco of the day. This one's from 1931 and it's a 262 locomotive uh, known as the 6100 class. And uh, she's just got a really small freight train with the small form factor box vans or whatever you want to call them. Uh, a few Weetabix, Kit Kat, uh, Red, etc. Uh, so hopefully that should look quite nice. I'll just grab these points. There we go, and I'll get her out and round to the front so you can see her again. And this one is running number 6147, uh, just in case anyone is interested. So yeah, here we go then, the last loco of the day. Try and keep it steady. There we go. Try and get her in shot again. There we go. Is that in? Yep, just about. So there she is then, the 262. Uh, lovely uh, 6100 class and uh, this one is absolutely really really heavy uh, it is a Hornby one uh, but it's uh, quite old I think I think it's 10 years old or perhaps a little bit more uh, and it's not the quietest of runners but it's certainly a very very powerful little loco and certainly these little uh, this well this tiny rake of wagons of course um, doesn't really do her justice um, she can pull you know probably three or four times that uh, but no a nice little freight train is what I thought she would have. So let's get the 6100 class up and running again then, and uh, see how she performs. And of course I'll tell you about the class, but that goes without saying. There we go. So first appearing in 1931, the 6100 class were designed for passenger duties around the London area specifically. Uh, the class was a development of Collett's 5101 class, which in turn was a development of Churchward's work anyway, surprise, surprise. And the 6100s had a higher boiler pressure and a great attractive effort overall than any previous examples. And uh, 70 of them were produced over about two years, but all but one were scrapped, which is a shame. And that was during the late 50s or the early 60s, of course towards the end of steam.
Okay then, I'm going to start all the other engines up then, well, the other two. So there's the pannier tank with the Great Western coaches. And here goes the collet class as well then. Nice and steadily does it. And let's have one last running session, shall we? So you've seen them all for today now, so you will have to let me know, I've put a little poll up, uh, you can let me know which engine was your favourite. I think I'll kick things off, and this is certainly liable to change, but I think the Castle class today has been my favourite, because it's just a wonderful model. But don't get me wrong, they're all good, I do love all of them, but you've got to have a favourite, <laughs> so yeah, let me know. Well, I've really, really enjoyed this one, and I hope you have as well. Uh, but that's it. I've got no more to show you today. So, yeah, thank you very much for watching, as always. Uh, please feel free to leave a like or a comment in the video, because I love it when you get in touch, of course. And also, if you'd like to, you can check out the Facebook and Twitter pages, and they're at facebook.com forward slash samstrains, or twitter.com forward slash samstrains. It would be really lovely to see you on there. But, of course, as always, thank you very much for watching once again. <laughs> and I'll see you very soon. Cheers, everybody.